And uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I hear Chris mentioned there's some food after, so I won't take too long. I'm never one to stand between people and uh, a snack if necessary. But I am excited uh, to introduce these two individuals. Uh, the president and I spent uh, a good time in the, in, the, uh, in the bunker going through lists of names and uh, fielding a lot of calls, having a lot of conversations hearing a lot about man-to-man -man defenses and uh, emotion offenses. So um, it, it, it really, at the end of the day, uh, the two individuals that will stand before you um, rose to the top um, because of their character and leadership ability. But uh, as, as I noted, it was a long and, and, and arduous process at times. Um, and there were a lot of people who, who, who helped us to uh, finalize the transition. So I, I first want to thank them so you know I, I brought my list uh, award show style so um, first is the executive steering council I think I saw one or two here now um, but that's a list of individuals a group of individuals vice presidents and such um, th that we, we've worked closely to help try to move the university forward and uh, they all came together in, in great fashion for for these two hires so I'm gonna run off of their names Courtney Hodges Victoria Kendon Cameron O'Brien Larissa Ferguson, Ken Copeland, Tim Pearson, and Justin Pope. Uh, that group was uh, very helpful in getting everything going. And also from the university side, not, not in the steering council, but um, as, as an athletic director, you find out the human resource officer is, uh, is a great person. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll be sending some chocolate soon. So uh, kudos and shout out to uh, Lisa Mooney. Also from athletics, uh, group that helped pull together today, helped during the searches, uh, helped me with the paperwork, most importantly, um, uh, and, 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 and helped me in, in being a sounding board as we went through these processes. Uh, Michelle Schuler, Rick Cantor, Joe Kaminsky, Emily Klein, Laura Sneed, Trey Eggleston, and Chris Cook uh, were all at the um, by my side pushing me through this. So. Um, before I get to introduce uh, Coach Aldridge, uh, and, and last but not least, I'd like to thank President Reevely, who, um, well, I'll say this. Um, there's not many athletic directors who are fortunate to be able to go into as the bunker, as I called it, uh, with someone who has as much in-depth knowledge uh, about college athletics and experience in college athletics. Uh, in fact, he, he, he just returned from Indianapolis um, and uh, got to listen firsthand as the Commission on Basketball report was provided. And um, being on the NCAA Presidential Forum, uh, he was part of the group that they gave feedback and provided comment from that initially. So it just, it just shows his high level of expertise in college athletics. And, uh, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to use him as a resource. And uh, it, it, it was great going through this process with him. So with that, I'd like to introduce President Taylor Reba. Thank you, Troy. This, it, it's such a great day for Longwood. It really is. And uh, it was so fun to, honestly, to, to work through this uh, together, Troy and me. Uh, there, there are not too many institutions in the whole country where the, the AD and the president themselves both are, are former D1 athletes. So we've, we've got, a, got a real sense of, of how, the, how it all ticks. Um, which makes it all the more exciting to be able to, to have somebody like Coach Aldrich, somebody of his caliber, coming. Uh, Longwood's got so much momentum on so many fronts right now. Uh, admissions is rolling along as we, we look ahead to, to uh, the May 1st deadline. Um, construction is, is humming and, and will soon, soon be complete, making this campus so much more beautiful. And it's, uh, it's tremendous to, to think about what can what can start to happen on the court in the, the years ahead <clears throat> likewise tremendous to think about what uh what coach aldrich is going to mean uh in the lives of of the student athletes that he's going to work with uh, that's something that troy and i prize uh, almost above everything uh, that, that uh, coaches are, are educators first and foremost and that's uh, that's the beauty of, of college athletics. That's what makes it so special. So we're thrilled. We're really thrilled. Thank you, Tim. 
With that, uh, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta warm me up first. Uh, he's excited. He's excited to get to it. Uh, in fact, we you know it took a little longer. And, uh, and, and having a traditional press conference or media availability because both coaches wanted to get off the ground, uh, wanted to get to know their teams, take some time and, and go through workout with teams. And we all felt that was uh, most important. Uh, both coaches have been working to build their staffs and are near complete, and I'll let them talk through that. Um, but, but as I noted, both, both coaches and Coach, Aldris, uh, Coach Aldrich rose to the top. Uh, Really felt like his leadership, um, his, he's got a uh, great demeanor about himself that uh, I think um, puts everybody in a room at ease, but, but I also started to notice uh, the competitor that lies within him um, in, in certain, certain instances. So I, I felt like, um, especially, especially given his, his non-traditional experience, uh, provide um, uh, a great example for our young men and uh, a great leader for our basketball program. Uh, really, really is um, a top of the line person. And, and that's what the, that's what was yielded in, in all the research I did and all the people I began to talk to about uh, who Griff is and what he believes in and how he conducts himself. And, and uh, I've, I've noticed that in, in, his, in his recent hires. Uh, says a lot about who he is and who he wants to surround himself with. So excited to watch him go to work uh, and, and excited to work with him as, as we work to build Longwood, Bas Longwood basketball. So with that, I'd like to introduce Coach Griffith Aldridge. Well, thank you. Uh, Troy told me I only have 25 minutes, so I'm going <laughs> to keep it to 20. <laughs> Um, but first off, I do want to thank President Reevely and, and, uh, and Troy for, for uh, this excellent opportunity. Um, I really couldn't be more excited about being back uh, at Longwood or, or being back in Farmville and at Longwood. Um, this particular opportunity is particularly special for me um, as it's a return to uh, my home state. My mother-in-law is from Texas. She's, she's cringing at me, <laughs> me calling Virginia my home state. But uh, return to my home state and, and also return to a community uh, that was so transformational for me, um, both as a, as a student and then, and then also as I, I began my professional career. Um, but my excitement is so much greater than that because as I've spent more time at Longwood and in Farmville, I mean, what I've rediscovered um, both about the university and the community just has me really excited about what we can do here. Um, as President Reevely mentioned, I mean, Longwood is a, a vibrant community. It's a vibrant university. Um, there's just a tremendous amount of things going on. Um, President Reevely's vision uh, for the university and where he wants to take it, uh, it's, it's a compelling mission. Um, there's a desire and there's a palpable sense that this university is going to greater heights. And for me, that's something that's very exciting to be a part of. And to help play a role as, as we do in the athletic department to really help uh, President Reevely and, and the rest of, of the board and administration uh, achieve its ultimate mission uh, of, of developing citizen leaders. Um, so that's just a, an exciting thing and it's hard to walk around campus as President Reevely noted and not see the construction. And while that may be uncomfortable uh, during the process, it's also great evidence that a lot is going on right now and that this is not a status quo university but we are going to new heights and again you know that's we want we want to be in the places where where people are developing and where things are things are really happening so that's just a, a very exciting thing for me you know coming back to to farmville um the reality is that it, it's very similar community in some senses uh, to where what it was 20 years ago when, when I was at Hampton Sydney from an ethos perspective. And I've just been um, overwhelmed by the supportive reception that, that uh, I've received and I know members of, of our new staff have received. Um, and it's very clear that the community wants to embrace uh, not only myself and our staff and, but, but a new era of, of Longwood basketball. And, uh, so that's, that's really something that, that we're excited to, to be a part of. 
And, uh, and maybe most importantly, what's got me really excited is, is the, the group of players that, that we have here at Longwood already. Um, you know, Coach G and his staff really did do a great job um, compiling a, a group of great uh, young men. And um, it's been a real joy for, for us to, to start to get to know them. Um, they've been hungry, uh, extremely coachable, uh, eager to get better, uh, and eager to, to move into this new era um, with, with great intensity. Um, it's been a lot of fun to get to know their personalities. We're, we're still, still getting to know them. Um, they don't laugh at my jokes as much as the UMBC guys did, so, so clearly they've got some areas to improve in. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it's, it's, I can already tell this is going to be a special, special group of young men, so that's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of fun for me. And obviously the, the players that you have, you know, previously and as you, you move into any type of transition period, you know, they're, they're critical as you, you try to implement your culture and your goals. And, you know, as we think about Longwood basketball going forward and, you know, what are, what are our goals? You know, first and foremost, um, we want to be a, a program that the university and the community can really take pride in. And that's clearly on the court, but it's also off the court as well. And on the court, we want to be a disciplined team uh, that plays uh, at, a, at a great pace and, and plays an excellent style of basketball. Um, and, uh, but off the court, we wanna, be, we wanna be men of character. We wanna be men who do the right thing. Um, and we wanna be great representatives of the university. And so those are, those are gonna be critical things um, that we focus on and, uh, as we move forward. And then secondly, when I think about, you know, the, the purpose of the program and, and for me, one of the main reasons that, that I've, you know, returned back to coaching as a, as a profession is um, it's got to be about the players. Um, it's got to be about their development. It's got to be about who they are. And in my first meeting with them, I told them that besides three little people who are in this room and, and a wife, um, they will always be behind those four people. But outside of those four people, they will, we will get every waking uh, moment of my attention. And um, our goal here is to help them develop holistically. Um, we want to encourage them. We want to challenge them. And ultimately, we want to love them. And uh, that may be on the court. That may be in the classroom. Um, and that may be, um, you know, personally. And, uh, but our desire is to see men who are very different when they leave Longwood from when they came to Longwood. And that, that will be uh, an important uh, element of our success uh, as, as we move forward. So how do we get there? Um, how, do, how do we accomplish those, those, those goals? I think first, um, making sure the culture that we want and the culture that, that we believe is, is important, we've got to get the culture right. And um, again, I think this spring we've had an opportunity to work out with the guys and uh, instill um, you know, some of our values. Uh, we'll have several core values. A lot of teams have core values. Um, ours will be excellence. It will be grit. It will be humility, um, gratitude, and service. And we've talked a lot with these guys about excellence, about having standards and maintaining our standards uh, at all times. And that's going to be something that uh, will be important for, for me and our staff to really hold our guys to, to our standards, that we must be who we are and not, uh, not dip in those standards uh, regardless of the circumstances. Uh, in order to do that, one must have grit. And uh, you know, Angela Duckworth has written a great book on this, and it's a, it's a hot, hot word right now. Um, but it's, it's critical. Um, to, to our long-term long success. So grit will be something that, that will be preached to our guys. Um, that will be a character trait that we really try to embody each and every day. And so, so those are, those are uh, key elements. Um, and then, then the last piece, which, which is perhaps you know, some of the most important pieces, got to get the right people on the bus. And um, you know, again, I'm encouraged by, by what I've seen from the existing roster, but Recruiting obviously is a key element to, to any organization, uh, but particularly in college sports and college basketball, 
um, it's the lifeblood of any program. And so ensuring that we are uh, recruiting the right type of kid who um, will embrace what we're trying to do with them both off the court as well as on the court uh, will be critical, will be critical for us. And um, so that's going to be a key element. I can't get into to our recruits right now due to, due to rules, um, but, but um, you know, we're, we, uh, we're excited. So lastly, or, or, or close to lastly, uh, style of play. Um, I think we're, we're very excited about um, the style that we want to implement. I'm, I'm influenced by uh, Tony Shaver, who's my coach at Hampton Sydney, and then, then uh, now the head coach at William & Mary, and then also my experience at UMBC in both cases, and then also how I've been coaching you know, throughout, is I love to play with great pace, uh, applying pressure offensively as well as defensively. And uh, for me, it's a fun style. Uh, I think it's a fun style uh, to watch. I think it's a beautiful way to play the game. Um, and as well, I think it's enjoyable for fans. Um, so we will, we will look to be aggressive offensively, but also disciplined. Um, we'll look to, to share the ball, be unselfish. Uh, we will look to shoot it uh, when open. Um, that will be a key element for our recruiting is to, to identify shooters uh, who can really shoot it and then give them the freedom uh, to, to shoot the right shot at the right time. Um, defensively, we'll, we'll continue to, to work on that as our per personnel comes together, uh, but we'll be a team that, that plays defense and understands that you've got to play uh, on both ends of the court uh, in order to, to win championships and be successful. So that's going to be an element that, uh, you know, that, that, that we'll focus on. And, uh, you know, this process isn't going to necessarily happen overnight. I mean, UMBC had an experience that, uh, um, you know, was uh, unique, to say the least. And uh, we will be working extremely hard to instill our culture and, uh, and develop our players. Um, but, uh, but we want to do it the right way. And uh, that, that will be uh, a key focus for us. Um, you know, and as, as I close again, I, I just uh, I do want to introduce uh, several members of our staff who are who are here. Uh, Marty McGillan uh, is uh, joined us. Extremely excited for uh, uh, Coach McGillan to, to join us. He's a he's a veteran of the Big South. Uh, he's he's worked with Hall of Fame coaches. Um, he's recently come from the University of Minnesota. Um, and just in the short time we've been together, it's been, been great to get to know him. He's got an incredible wit uh, that, uh, that is fun to be around and uh, has an incredible way with, uh, with the players. Um, Cody Anderson uh, is, is staying on as well. Um, and, and to be frank, I, I wasn't sure how we were going to handle the, the existing staff, but Cody just blew me away. And Cody's just... Um, an outstanding young man. It's a privilege to be with him. Uh, has an un unbelievable work ethic and, and attitude. Uh, I'm honored that that he's decided to stay with us and, and couldn't be more more excited about him. Maurice Williams is is joining us from Johns Hopkins. Uh, Maurice, I've known for years um, and is just again another wonderful guy uh, who who is extremely relational. Has a great basketball mind. Uh, and an outstanding, an outstanding recruiter. Um, but as we've put our staff together, um, one of the key elements, and, and uh, Troy kept on asking me because we put it together slowly, um, is you know, the, the ethos that we want to develop within the program was paramount. And uh, um, you know, hiring quickly is oftentimes the wrong answer. And so I couldn't be more excited about the, the you know, three of the men that, that have, have agreed to join us. Um, and uh, I think they all embody the values that we want to uh, instill and, and what will be the core of our, our Longwood basketball program. So I'm, so I'm super excited about that. And then lastly, I, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce my family. Uh, I've got three little ones, Laura Lee, Ford, and Scott, and my wife, Julie. And then uh, I'm very grateful that my mother-in-law flew in from Houston, Texas uh, to join us, Elizabeth Waring, and then, then my parents, uh, Jenny Aldrich and, uh, and Jim Aldrich. So with that, uh, I, I will close. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll now open the floor to any questions. Anyone have anything for Coach Aldrich or Coach Aldrich? Thank you, Yeah. 
Um, as your first season of head coach, how do you plan on motivating your players to really buy in on their role? The the individual players. Yes. Um, yeah, I think that I think that's a process. Um, I think everybody has to understand, um, you know, that first and foremost, it is about the team. I think, you know, that goes to one of our core values of humility. Um, and we, we've already talked about that, that humility is really thinking less about yourself. And uh, in order for us to be successful and for order, in order for any organization to be successful, there has to be sacrifice. And um, so that's going to be something that, that will be um, – something that permeates our organization and, and our, our program. Um, and then the guys have to earn it. Um, we've had, had real conversations uh, with the players right now that, that now is the time when, when we really grow. You can't wait until September or October uh, when the season's about to start to, to try to get your game in shape. But um, if you want to improve in a certain area, now's your time to, to go to work and, and improve and, and earn it. And then, of course, you gotta, you've got to prove that on the court. And so that will, that will be a, a key element. Coach, I'll throw one out there for you. Sure. Uh, your impressions of the Big South Conference and where uh, Longwood long fits into that, what should it take to succeed? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, Big South is a is a great conference. I'm coming from the America East, uh, which uh, frankly is a similar level, um, I would say, uh, to the Big South. Um, Big South is full of some great programs who who've got great uh, tradition of of winning. Um, obviously, a few key uh, coach departures this this off season, and then with the transfer epidemic, you know, rosters are bouncing around uh, even now. Um, and so the Big South, it's a, it's a great conference. That it's, it's chock full of great uh, coaches um, with Richie McKay and, and uh, Pat uh, Kelsey down at Winthrop and, and many others. Um, and uh, so I think it's, it's going to be a, a competitive, you know, competitive environment. You know, where does Longwood fit? Um, I really like our positioning in the Big South. I mean, we, obviously we've got Liberty. And Radford is a Virginia school, but I think geographically we're located in a in a wonderful spot. Uh, not only Farmville, but just geographically relative to the rest of the conference, that I think can be turned into an advantage. Um, you know, much much of the other Big South is chalk right there in North Carolina and South Carolina. So I think I think that's a that's a healthy advantage. Um, and then ultimately, I, I think, um, you know, how do we become successful? I think it goes back to, to some of the things that we talked about earlier, which is, I think, getting the culture that we want correct. I think also getting the character, you know, of, you know, addressing, you know, some of the issues to the prior question. But then I, I also think really developing a clear identity of who we are that's attractive. And, you know, we want to get to a point where people understand oh that's longwood basketball that means x and um i think that will be a, a big selling point so that's something that our staff is actively discussing now um and uh that's something that we'll we'll really work work hard towards coach i just wanted to ask with your virginia background and you mentioned going to Hampton city uh how important in, in your recruiting uh process is recruiting within the state of virginia yeah virginia is it's it's critical it's critical. You, you know, I think when you, you get to the point, just, just like the prior question, um, Richmond, you know, the Tidewater area where I'm from, Northern Virginia, um, and then you've got Roanoke and Lynchburg areas as well, as well as just kind of the, the central part of the state and, and western part. It's chock full of great players who, who would be great players here at Longwood. So we've got to recruit kind of our, our backyard, if you will. Um, and so that's that's something that we're, we'll uh, we'll work very hard to. We we intentionally brought on some some staff members who know this area extremely well, have deep connections. Uh, I certainly have deep connections from my playing days and and then you know coaching as well. And so um, that will be something that will be very important. Um, but also I think there's several what I would call hot spots. Uh, that are also important. You know, I've been in Texas for a long time and, and um, have, have great network there and, and insight into, you know, what would be a good fit there. Um, and so that's, you know, that's an area that, that we'll, we'll actively recruit as well. And, 
um, you know, so you have to uh, you have to be intelligent. We don't have unlimited uh, resources from a human capital perspective or from a budgetary perspective. Um, so you have to be efficient and uh, cost effective, you know, with your work. But you know, Virginia's got to be key, you know, for us. It's got to be key for us. As a student athlete myself, how important is the student aspect of your players? Uh, it's it's uh, it's everything. Um, you know, we can you know students come here for their education first, and. Uh, you know, when you come, you come here again. I played, and and I went on to graduate school, and and uh, you know, which is so to me, understanding that kids uh, are going to move on to something most likely, unless they stay in coaching, for example, um, they've got to be permitted and enabled and encouraged to embrace the academic side. Um, so that's going to be fundamental. I mean, even in our workouts now, we have kids who miss workouts because they've either got to study or they've got a, got a uh, class or something like that. So um, one of the things we'll do with, with our student athletes is we will get together with them and talk to them about what are their goals, both you know personally, athletically, academically. And we need to understand what those are. And uh, we'll do that as a staff. Um, and our, our staff will we'll instill an academic coach program where we've got a, a staff member who's, who's uh, focused on each of the players, you know, of course, behind, you know, Hannah uh, in her role. But helping, helping the, the players achieve their academic goals and, and maybe more importantly, holding them accountable to those goals uh, is, is going to be critical. And, and that's something we've talked to the players about. Not every player is going to be a... 3-8 student, but if they are a 2-8 student and bringing in a 2-2, well, that's, that's no good. And they need to be, again, going back to that core value of excellence, are you being excellent in the classroom? And so that's something that, that we'll, uh, we will push uh, hard as well. Yeah, that's that's a so much. I mean, so much. You know, I coached you know AAU for so long, um, and uh, that was such a great experience because you're you're dealing with so many different players from different backgrounds and and things like that. So that that really shapes you a lot, um, and uh, was an extremely valuable experience. I would say the AAU experience because of the type of kid that I was working with. Um, I think it made me a lot more empathetic. Um, and uh, when I first started coaching AAU, to be honest with you, I was so intense. I was young. It was about winning. It was about this. And, uh, and then kind of I think as I matured, you know, personally and spiritually, I, I realized that, you know, the, the development of the, of the kid and the person is, is paramount. And so um, – I think that's a that's a critical element that I would say is was really uh, transformational, and um, you know from my experience at UMBC, um, you know UMBC frankly was not too dissimilar to to where Longwood was uh, when when we uh, joined that university, and so it was a great training ground um, to kind of experience some of the the um, the challenges. Um, that, that we may experience with some of the players, maybe mentally or psychologically, um, and, uh, and you know how to, how to attack those. And so I feel like that was, uh, that was a wonderful experience. And then, you know, uh, Ryan Odom is a great coach, uh, and the staff we had there was, was tremendous. So just learned so much from, from everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it.